Welcome to the Penguin Post newspaper podcast. Today we are interviewing Mark Mayer. He studies human fossils. Let's ask him some questions. How did humans look two million years ago? Well, they didn't look like us, that's for sure. Um, they had a smaller brain. Their brain was about half the size, um, more or less. They had a face that was sticking forwards. Um, so their faces were out in front of their, their eyes. The way ours are today, our faces are very flat. They were um, almost our size and they had lost their body hair as far as we can tell. They had adapted to a warm African environment where they were sweating. And as far as we can tell, they kind of looked like us from a distance. But as you got closer to one of our ancestors, you would realize there's something wrong. This is not quite a person. Uh, about two million years ago, they still hadn't controlled fire. They still were scavengers and not really hunting for their food the way we do. So there's a lot in store. If you go back two million years ago, you might think you're looking at a person, but there's a lot left that has to happen in terms of evolution. A great question. Why do you study human fossils? Why do I study human fossils? Um, I think that knowing your history, or in this case, our prehistory, is one of the great unanswered questions. If you go back 100 years, people had no idea about where we came from. Not really. They had some, a couple of fossils, but not like the fossils we have today. And so for me, it's one of the ultimate mysteries. Where do we come from? How did we used to look? How did we act? Because I always dreamed about time travel. And my job is a way of going back through time and doing detective work to look for clues about how they looked, how they acted, and what they ate. So it's kind of like being a time traveler. And it's, um, it's a fun job. I recommend it. Can you tell us about how and when you excavated off, off of the Pithecus? Wow, that was a really good try. Australopithecus is a species of, I would say, ape men. Not really humans yet, because they were shorter than us, small. Their arms were very long. Even their fingers were curved. You know how chimpanzees walk on their knuckles and they climb in trees? So that's very beneficial. And even though Australopithecus walked on two legs, like that, like we do, and we call that a biped, they were still living in the trees. And so my excavations, um, I never managed to actually find an Australopithecus personally, but um, since the fossils are so rare, but I have worked on the fossils once they're discovered. I specialize in certain types of bones and so when we don't find bones at our excavations, other scientists collaborate together and we all work together to understand those fossils. So I've done some re research on the earliest human ancestors. And um, have you guys heard of Lucy, the famous fossil Lucy? Well, now you did. Lucy's a really famous fossil. And um, we discovered some really cool things about her uh, anatomy, her bones, and even scientists have now found footprints for Lucy's species. So there's some really exciting things happening in, in anthropology and paleoanthropology, uh, and we're learning about where we come from. And what's really interesting is all of the earliest human ancestors, like Australopithecus, like Lucy's species, they all come from Africa. And so why? While people now live in Europe and America and Asia or wherever, what's really important is that our science, our understanding of human evolution tells us that each of us is an African. Amelie, Tori, and Carmen, you guys are all Africans deep down. Your deepest roots, your deepest bloodline can be traced back to Africa. And I wish that everybody knew that so that maybe we'd get along a little bit more with each other instead of fighting about this or that. Um, 
if everybody realized that humans are very similar, that we all come from the same homeland, I think the world would be a better place, don't you guys? I love that question. What is the most difficult part of your job? The most difficult part of the job is trying to understand little clues that are left behind in the bones. Sometimes we just find tiny fragments. Um, I'm gonna hold up a little skull. This is a skull of a recent fossil found in South Africa. And this guy has a nickname Littlefoot based on some of the early fossils. Apparently he has a little foot, um, but he has a big face. He has pretty big teeth. The bones that I study, sometimes we get tiny fragments. And so it takes sometimes years to actually piece together what was going on. But even a single bone or a single tooth can tell you what an animal ate, how long ago they lived, the environment that they come from, and even what the bone was being used for. Because when you use a a body part a lot, the muscles leave their signature on the bone and we can interpret those bone signatures millions of years later. So it takes a lot of training, a lot of school, uh, and a lot of experience. So I would say that's the hardest part. I'm leaving out finding the fossils because that's pretty obvious that finding fossils is like winning the lottery. Nobody really finds fossils. Um, the fact that we have found fossils is, is great. But um, so that's kind of the easy answer. Finding fossils is very hard, but I think analyzing the small, tiny bone fragments takes a lot of patience and a, a lot of expertise. So it's fun, but it's definitely difficult. Great question. How do you use a computer to make pictures of ancient humans? So computers today are pretty much the way that we do everything. In the old days, we would just describe fossils, our interpretations, our impressions of them. Today, we do statistical analyses of bones and the shape of bones in ways that even when I was in school, they, they, they were not available. The methods were not yet developed. So we use computers to put layers of muscle and uh, different tissues on top of the bones and try and do biomechanical reconstructions of what these creatures, our ancestors used to look like, and even the muscle forces that were acting on those bones. So computers today are an important thing to learn about. And when you guys find fossils one day, there are going to be methods that are incredible that we didn't even dream about today. But we can do reconstructions using animation and other techniques to more fully understand the past. So it's a great time to be looking for fossils and trying to understand our history. Can you explain to us the difference between Australopithecines and the other human fossils like, like Neanderthals? Sure. Um, Neanderthals are a lot like humans. They lived much more recently in places like Western Asia and in Europe. That's their main area. They were never an African species. Australopithecus was much, much smaller, much more primitive, living almost uh, four million, four and a half million years ago. Um, some of the earliest species that I worked on for Australopithecus are 4.2 million years ago. That's very old. Whereas Neanderthals were the cavemen, when you think of those cavemen uh, who had fires and lived in caves and hunted big game like mammoths. Those are the Neanderthals. They are big and bad. They're strong, and smart, and they made beautiful stone tools. And the earliest Australopithecus, the ape men I was mentioning, they didn't really use tools for eating meat. It appears they were vegetarians. And if they used the stone tools, which it looks like they may have, apparently they used them more for digging. So you have a more vegetarian in Australopithecus, one that was actually hunted by the big cats. That was food, cat food, if you want to think about it that way. And then the Neanderthals, 
were the biggest and strongest in terms of their body mass of any of our ancestors. And in fact, most of us have Neanderthal DNA. So we still have Neanderthals running around on the planet today. They've gone extinct, but a tiny little trickle of their genetic heritage survived in most of us. So Neanderthals are in a way still around, even though they looked very different from us. They still have those big faces and they had a brow ridge of bone across their eyes, made them look, I guess, very sinister, very ape-like in some ways on an otherwise very human-like species. So that is a great question. That's a college question, guys. Good job. Why do you think we started to walk on two legs instead of four? That is one of the biggest questions in my field. Um, when you walk up on two legs, you get much, much slower. And if you sprain one ankle, you're kind of in trouble, right? You're out of business because you can't run away from a lion or a leopard or a hyena if you have a sprained ankle. And we're very slow. Even the world's fastest man is, you know, slower than a chihuahua if you want to have a race. So it is a great question. Why would we want to give up speed and in a sense safety running on four legs? But it seems the answer it, 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 is a couple of factors at play. Number one, when we started walking upright, our ancestors came down from the trees. It's because it seems like there was a change in Africa's climate. Our earliest ancestors still lived in trees, but there weren't as many trees in Africa around the time that we started walking upright. And so they needed to walk across open spaces, it seemed, and they needed to stand tall above the grass line to do that so they could look around, see for predators that might be lurking in the grass. Another thing about walking upright, and this may be the most important reason, is that it's very efficient. You know how certain cars get really good mileage and other cars guzzle gas? Yeah? Well, walking on two legs, if you have a, the right anatomy, like a certain way our hips look, our knees, when they lock in place. It turns out walking upright is very cheap in terms of energy. So with the new environment, not having to be in trees all the time and walking upright being very efficient, uh, it seems like it was a pretty good idea. Other people think it's because it allowed you to carry things in your hands like tools uh, or food. Um, chimpanzees use tools, chimpanzees carry food, and they never decided to become full-time upright walkers. So I'm not so sure that's the best explanation. I think the idea that walking upright is very, very efficient. Imagine a car that got 500 miles to the gallon. That's a pretty cool car, right? Well, that's kind of like how humans walk. When we walk upright, it's much more efficient in terms of energy consumption than animals that walk on all fours, especially chimpanzees who share a lot of DNA with us. And so with the changing environment in Africa, the forests began to dry up and some open spaces became available. And I think that walking upright was not only cheaper, was safer. So a lot of reasons, and it seemed to work, right? Because we still walk upright about 6 million years after that experiment uh, was invented. Great question. Were you interested in psychology as a kid? Well, as a kid, I was reading a lot of Tarzan. That was my favorite um, book and my every comic book and I lived my life climbing trees and swinging from trees. So I always glorified the idea of being a half human, half ape. And when I learned about that there used to be species of early humans that lived in trees and uh, lived in Africa, it just seemed really cool. And when I found out that there were still a lot of unanswered questions, I decided that's what I wanted to do with my life, to explore our early ancestry. Um, I always liked history, 
And then I realized we pretty much know a lot about history because everybody wrote that stuff down. What I like about studying prehistory, even as a kid, was that there are still some unanswered questions. There are things we don't know. And so it's an exciting field. And it's, it's pretty amazing that I get to do this as a grown up when it's um, something that not too many people think they can do. But there are a lot of caves to be explored, a lot of places where there are fossils waiting to be discovered. And we could use you guys out there with us, helping us dig them up and understanding what was going on. That was so cool. We learned a lot from you and thank you for your time. Bye. Bye guys. I can't wait to read more about this stuff in your newspaper.